This video is sponsored by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitoring application that gives you the power to see why bugs are happening and experience them just like your users. Try today at logrocket.com forward slash YT. Hello developers, today we're taking a look at programmatic file downloads in the browser. File downloads are a core aspect of what we do on the web. Every day, countless files get downloaded from the internet, ranging from binary files like applications, images, videos, and audio, to files in plain text. A quick overview of what we're gonna be checking out today. Firstly, a little review of the traditional client-server communication when fetching a file via HTTP or HTTPS. Then we are gonna look at enforcing file downloads. How do we actually do that? What are the things that make that happen? Then we're gonna go into programmatic content generation with HTML5 and these new web APIs. The specific example we're gonna be using today is through the Fetch API. We're gonna be using the Pick Some Photos API for that and do some image manipulation, some JSON manipulation with that. We're gonna be generating a CSV file that's comma separated value file from this JSON on array using the Pixum API. So let's rewind it and start from the beginning, fetching files from the server. Now, as you can see in the schematic, this is how it's traditionally been done. The file to be downloaded is requested from a server through a client, i.e. your web browser. And then the server returns a response containing the content of the file, as well as some instructional headers specifying how the client should download the file. And as you can see in this diagram, the green line shows the flow of the request from the client to the server. This is going over HTTP. And then the orange line is showing the flow of the response from the server right back to the client. And really this just illustrates the communication flow. But if you wanted to see what the request from the client looks like or the response from the server, we can check this out. Now this is a one possibility of what it might look like. And this is a sample HTTP response from a GIF image. As you can see right here, content type is GIF. And in this response, the server is simply serving the raw content of the resource represented with these asterisks. The thing is here though, when your client, when your web browser receives this HTTP response, it's going to display or render this GIF image. And we don't want that. We want that we want this image to be downloaded. So what do we do? There is a certain header that we can use called the content disposition header. We're going to use this to enforce the download. And this header, this content disposition provides information on the disposition type and the disposition parameters. So disposition type, this is usually one of two. Number one, it can be inline, and that means the body part is meant to be displayed automatically when the message content is, is displayed. It can also be an attachment, and this means the body part is separate from the main content of the message and should not be displayed automatically except when prompted by the user. And then we have the disposition parameters. These are the additional parameters that specify info about the body part or file, like a file name, creation date, modification date, read size. So going back to our example of our HTTP response, our possible response for downloading a GIF image, this is what it could look like if we want it to enforce file download. The magic really is here in the content disposition. And now what this does is that the server is gonna enforce a file download of this GIF image. Now let's talk about click to download in the browser. Certainly you've done this before probably countless times. And what we've done traditionally is simply use an HTML anchor element aka the A tag. Now this anchor element adds hyperlinks to other resources and documents from an HTML document. HTML5 actually spruced this up a little. They added a download attribute that was added to the anchor element. Now this is used to inform the browser to download the URL instead of navigating to it. As you can see, the syntax is dead simple here, really easy to implement. Now we've gotten to the point, you guys are probably saying, when are we gonna be doing some coding right now. We're gonna talk about programmatic content generation. We're gonna be using this example, CSV generation from a JSON array. So we're gonna be using a web API called the Fetch API, and we're gonna be asynchronously fetching JSON data from a web service. Again, the Pick Some Photos API, and we're gonna be transforming that to a string of comma separated values. So a breakdown of what we're gonna do, we're gonna fetch an array collection of JSON objects from an API. We're going to extract selected fields from each item in the array, and then we're going to reformat the extracted data as CSV. 
Now here is my script. And as you can see here, we're using the global fetch function provided by the fetch API to connect to that Pixum Photos API. And then we're filtering the collection and converting the collection array to a CSV string. So let's tidy things up here. We're gonna have a filter function called square images, and that is gonna filter images in the collection with equal width and height. Just make it a little more uniform. And now here, as you can see, we have a higher order function called collection to CSV. And what this function does is it's taking the array of keys and returning a function that takes an array collection of objects and converts that to a CSV string. This is a really interesting function here. And then finally, we specify the fields we want to extract from each photo object in the collection with the export fields array. Now, if I go to my terminal, I can actually run this file in Node. So let's see what happens when we run a programmatic JS. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And again, that is being generated from this list here. Now let's download our generated content. Earlier in this video, we looked at how the traditional flow went, how we download files that are served from a server and sent to the client. We've also seen how we can programmatically extract or generate content using web APIs. Okay, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, downloading the generated content. So first, let's just, for, for kicks and giggles, let's say we have a blob by some means, a binary large object. We want to create a helper function that allows us to create a download link using that anchor tag that can be clicked in order to download the content of the blob, just like a regular file download. So let's build a helper function. Here's our logic. We're gonna create an object URL for the blob object. We're gonna create that anchor element. Then we need to set the href attribute of the anchor element to the created object URL. We're going to set the download attribute to the file name of the file to be downloaded. And what this is gonna do is force the anchor element to trigger a file download when it's clicked. And if the link is for a one-off download, we need to release the object URL after the anchor element has been clicked. Notice that the helper function takes a file name as its second argument. This is useful for when you need to set the default file name for a downloaded file. The helper function, now this function returns a reference to the created anchor element, and that's useful if you want to attach it to the DOM or use it in some other way. Okay, so let's go back to the CSV generation from the JSON array. Let's revisit this using the Pixum API. We need to do a little modification here. We're gonna update the final promise then handler to create a download link for the generated CSV string and automatically click it to trigger a file download using the download blob helper function we created before. So here's what this mod should look like here. And then we're also creating a new blob object for the CSV string and we need to set the correct type using type text slash CSV. We need to call the download blob helper function to trigger an automatic download for the CSV file. And then we're gonna move the promise rejection handler to a separate catch block. And here on CodePen is a working example of this. Now there are some extra things here you can go through. They're all commented um, if you wanna explore that more. But let's, let's just click this and, and see what happens. Oh, something downloaded. What could it be? In this code pen example, I renamed this to programmaticphotos.csv. So let's just check this out. Look at this. Shabam. Look at that. Ooh, that's nice and clean. Web APIs are so powerful, whether it's the Canvas API, which we didn't even talk about today, file API, URL API, you can do a lot of cool stuff here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials, and we will see you in the next video.